G'day and welcome back to Grizzly and Bear Overland. From what could well be one of the most unbelievably epic campsites we have ever stayed at in our entire lives. But more on that later, you'll have to stay tuned because all of this place will be featured in a Friday's video in a few weeks time. Today, I'm gonna follow up on the video series about the modifications we made to Grizzly and Bear for our Australian adventures. The subject of today's video is the installation of an additional fridge freezer, an extra solar panel and MPPT charge controller. Just briefly to remind you guys why we decided to install an additional fridge freezer in our Defender. As you know, we're in Australia now where the distance between resupply stations and towns can be very, very long. Not only can resupply towns be sparse, but the cost of groceries in some of the remote towns and communities can be extremely expensive. By adding the additional fridge freezer and using it primarily as a freezer, we'll be able to stock up on meat and veggies when we're in a town, enabling us to stay remote for far longer at a time and still be cooking up tasty brys. Or do I need to say Barbies now I'm in Australia? If you do remember back to the video I made talking about these modifications, then you will remember that I said we were going to remove the remaining rear seats in the Defender and install my dad's spare angle. At the very last minute, we decided not to remove those rear seats. Instead, we bought a very small 11 liter Dometic fridge freezer that can be used as a fridge or freezer but not both at the same time. This little fridge fits perfectly behind the driver's seat. I've fastened it to the floor with a couple of straps. Now, when I initially installed this fridge, I had it running off the vehicle's auxiliary battery. Now we've got a Blue Seas dual battery system. I installed the additional 50 watt solar panel on the roof, thinking that it might be enough to keep that battery topped up. Turns out this fridge is not so efficient. The Blue Seas dual battery system ensures that the starter battery for the Defender and the auxiliary battery remain separated during normal operations. So if we're camped out for a few days and we are charging something in the vehicle or running this fridge like I was, then the auxiliary battery in the Defender will be drained and the starter battery will remain full. This is quite important because obviously it ensures that even if that auxiliary battery is drained and, uh, and it can go completely flat, whether you're charging or whatever you're using it for, you've still got that starter battery there to kick the engine over when it's time to go home. Now, before we installed this new fridge freezer, the vehicle's auxiliary battery was used purely for charging accessories drones, cameras, phones, etc. With the install of this new freezer and it running continuously, I thought I'd install an additional 50 watt solar panel on the roof rack of the Defender. Now this additional solar panel is a 50 watt Renergy flexible solar panel. And I've installed it on our Alu box storage box on the roof rack of the Defender using timber runners and heavy duty double-sided Velcro tape. Now the reason I've used this heavy duty double-sided Velcro tape is because I've also got an eight meter extension of uh, solar cable so that this solar panel can be removed from the roof rack if we're parked up in the shade for a couple of days and use similar to how you would use a solar blanket. I drag that out and put it under the sun. This new solar panel is topping up the auxiliary battery in the Defender via a Victron Energy 75 slash 15 MPPT solar charge controller. In my opinion, and we've got absolutely no affiliation with Victron, it doesn't get much better than Victron Energy when it comes to choosing an off-grid system. So we had been running this new system for a couple of weeks now up here in the Pilbara. So I can give you a bit of a rundown on how it's been performing. Is it working as well as I could have hoped for? Well, the answer to that is no. <laughs> the additional 50 watt solar panel on the roof rack is working very, very well. And it definitely helps to keep that auxiliary battery topped up when we're parked up for multiple days. With the fridge running all night long in the Defender and draining that auxiliary battery down, then obviously the next day, the 50 watt solar panel can only do so much and it's never topping that battery back up to full. So as the days roll on, we get further and further behind on that auxiliary battery's capacity. A quick side note on 
on those flexible solar panels. Always install them to allow airflow between the panel and the roof or whatever you're fixing it to. If these type of panels are stuck with Sikaflex or however you choose to fix them down to a metallic surface, then they will possibly overheat and fail. We know this from personal experience. When we bought the camper, we had the guys at the, uh, at the shop install one of these flexible panels, a 180 watt panel. They Sikaflexed it directly to Grizzly's roof and it died within two months. It got cooked in the Moroccan Sahara. Now this new fridge is running very inefficient. Granted, it's getting pretty warm where we are at the moment up in northern Western Australia. We're getting about 38 degrees, 39 degrees most days, but I have to say I'm very disappointed in the fridge. In my opinion, this little fridge has very poor insulation in comparison to other similar fridges on the market. The fridge pulls roughly two to three amps when it's running, which actually isn't too bad, but the problem is it's been running almost non-stop. In my experience with other top-loading fridge freezers, they can be extremely efficient in comparison to upright fridges. So what are we going to do about it? Or should I say, what have I done about it as of about three hours ago? To ensure we didn't lose a freezer full of meat, we came up with a temporary solution, which worked very well for a couple of weeks up until today, which I've finally modified. The new fridge that we've installed, along with most other uh, camping or mobile fridge freezers, can be run on 12 volt DC, but it can also be run on 240 volt AC. If you have followed us for a while, then you'll know that Grizzly the Camper is kitted out with a massive 480 amp hours of lithium battery capacity. With the 540 watt solar array on the roof of Grizzly, along with the Australian sunshine, then we have more power than we can use. We are running an electric induction cooktop multiple times daily. We've got a blender or a smoothie maker. We charge a portable vacuum cleaner, two laptops, cordless drill batteries, charging the drone, the phones, the camera, along with running the fridge in Grizzly, and we are not even scratching the surface of our battery capacity. Now what we did as a temporary solution for when we're staying in one place for a few days at a time, was just go ahead and buy a five meter extension cable. We ran that from the inverter inside the camper into the fridge in the car, and it worked great. The only issue with that was that we have to have the inverter running all the time, which in turn, pulls a little bit of power that we didn't necessarily need to be doing. The 240 volt power is coming from our newly installed Renergy 2000 watt inverter. Before setting out on our Australian adventures, we converted the camper to 240 volts over our previous 110 volts that we did in Japan, and that was in order to be able to run Australian appliances. We'll cover this install along with the additional new purpose-built for campers induction cooktop that we're using, which is awesome, by the way, uh, in another video. As of this morning, I've modified that setup again to a more permanent solution. No longer do we need to run the five meter extension lead from the inverter to power that fridge in the vehicle. I got my spare parts out and was very happy to find that I'd thrown in there plenty of electrical connections, some spare wire, all the bits and pieces I needed to run a new line from the camper's uh, lithium battery setup all the way through into the Defender and to a 12 volt power socket. So now the fridge is running in the Defender off of the lithium batteries in the camper. So even though I do believe still that this fridge is quite inefficient, it doesn't matter because we've got that huge capacity in the camper and I've got no concern at all that it'll drain that down. This 12 volt line that I've run from the camper to the Defender has a plug in the, um, the wheel arch area so that I can disconnect or connect when we remove the camper or install the camper, vice versa. I do believe that the way we've got it set up right now will work and it will work well. Uh, we're gonna leave it the way it is for the next month on our current Pilbara tour. This is, realistically, this is as hot as it's gonna get for us um, on any of our time in Australia but we'll keep, keep an eye on it, keep testing it. And by the time we get back to Perth, if we're really not happy with it, then we may change to something else at a later date. But for now, we'll see how it goes. All right, friends, I'm gonna wrap that one up by thanking you once again for checking out this video. Huge shout out to our patrons. Uh, we can't thank you enough. You really do keep this show on the road. Any advice, criticism, or both, 
leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. It's getting hot. It's time for me to go for a swim. Take care and we'll see you next time.